In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Chaplain's Report today does relate exactly to what we were talking about, about different churches basically throwing the gospel aside so that they can let other people feel better, so that they can be welcoming to everybody. That they have lowered their standards of truth and lowered their standards of following God's word so that they can meet the far smaller standard of tolerance. And what I mean by that is they would rather tolerate everybody than love them. They would rather be acceptable to other people than preach the truth of God's word. Rather than tell anybody that they're wrong, because you think about it like a a parent and a child. What parent loves their child more? The parent that never corrects their child at all and lets them do whatever they want? Or the parent that when they see the child doing something that might hurt themselves, they say, no, 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 no. Hang on there. See, that's the parent that really loves their child. And Paul, in a lot of ways, felt like a parent, not in the same sense that God was, but Paul had sort of a parental demeanor when it came to some of the churches that he helped put together. And it was Paul and several other apostles that went through the region of Galatia and brought those churches about that started converting people that eventually grew into the various congregations. But unfortunately, the Galatians had a bad false teaching problem. That Paul had gone through that region, and they started out strong, they were listening to the words of the apostles, they were following the gospel of Christ, and then a whole bunch of false teachers started saying things that the apostles never said. And started telling them that they had to do this and had to do that and that they could ignore this and ignore that. They were teaching false doctrines. And Paul, even though he hadn't been gone that long from the region of Galatia, had already heard some very troubling reports about the Christians there. And that's part of the reason that he wrote this letter. And I think that there's a lot of relevance here today in our society. Because we have exactly the same thing going on. So this is what the Apostle Paul wrote to the Christians in Galatia, in Galatians 1, 6 through 10. I am amazed that you are so quickly deserting him who called you by the grace of Christ for a different gospel, which is really not another, only there are some who are disturbing you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we, or an angel from heaven, should preach to you a gospel contrary to what we have preached to you, he is to be accursed. As we have said before, so I say again now, if any man is preaching to you a gospel contrary to what you received, he is to be accursed. For I am now seeking the favor of men or God, or am I striving to please men? If I were still trying to please men, I would not be a bondservant of Christ. So, I don't see how you can read that verse and not immediately think of what's going on today. Because you look all throughout that passage, and I think this is actually something that's very comforting. Not that we're in the situation that we are, but that there are no new problems. That the church has been dealing with this since the first century. And... This is something that has been going on for a very long time. False doctrine has always been a problem in the Lord's church. But you look at the way that Paul starts that passage out, and we could go for hours on this, but I'm just going to give you a quick summary here. He says, I am surprised that it took so little time for you to get off the right track. Because remember, Paul hasn't been gone from Galatia for very long. And he's already hearing these very disturbing reports of people preaching things that the apostles never said and are not in agreement with the gospel that is being taught. And he says that they are 
calling him away from the gospel of the grace of Christ, which can you get any better than that? You're really going to try to improve on the son of God coming down from heaven to die for your sins. You're going to somehow tweak that story and make it better. He's saying, why would you leave that for this false doctrine that is being peddled amongst your members? And he says that there are those around here that are trying to distort the gospel of Christ, which is exactly what's happening here. Whether you're talking about being accepting of other religions and saying that they're perfectly okay, or whether it's accepting of things like homosexuality or abortion or any other number of hot button issues. There are people trying to twist the gospel into saying something that it doesn't to fit their own personal agenda, to fit what they want the gospel to say, rather than changing themselves to try to fit what the gospel says. It's a fine but very important distinction. But I really love this next line that Paul gives here. He says that even if we, talking about the apostles, even if we start saying things, that are contrary to the gospel, don't listen to us. You see, Paul understood that human beings are fragile. Human beings are fallible. They make mistakes. And so he is putting himself accountable here, saying, if I start preaching things that is the opposite of what I told you beforehand, which was revelation from the Holy Spirit, in other words, if people start telling you that the scripture says something else, that person is to be accursed even if I do it. Paul was setting himself up and saying, you guys need to hold even me accountable. The scripture is the absolute word of God. Anybody, I don't care who they are, even if they are an apostle, or you see an angel descend from heaven and tell you this gospel, if they're telling you something that is contrary to the scripture, you don't listen. That person is to be accursed. See, Paul wasn't somebody that said, listen to my thoughts on what the Bible says. He says, just read the gospel. We gave it to you for a reason. And if anybody tells you anything contrary to that, you don't listen to that person. Paul didn't even want them to heed his words in case he went off the rails. And there's a reason for that. This is a very strong case for understanding that the Bible is God's absolute word. And anybody that strays from that is somebody that is not to be heeded, not to be listened to. There's a reason God made one single standard, a measuring stick by which everybody else could be measured. Because otherwise, it's all just a bunch of opinions and it's all subjective. That's not what God wanted. That would make God, by definition, unfair. If he left the salvation of your immortal soul up to chance, and if you just happened to think the right thing at that time, that would make God incredibly unfair. That's why God wrote it down, made a standard, and said, everybody has to live by this. Religious leaders have to live by this. Apostles have to live by this. This is absolute truth. And anybody saying anything other than this, don't listen to that person. That's what Paul is saying here. And then he goes a little bit further down and again says, just repeats himself for emphasis says, if, it, if anybody says anything contrary to what we've been saying, let him be a curse. So he he's just repeats himself again there in verse 9. And then in verse 10, I think this is where this really hits home because this, I mean, this is the epitome of what is going on in the larger Christian community as a whole. In other words, every denomination of Christianity and what's going on in the Lord's church. It, it's happening everywhere. There is nobody immune to it. There is no, Don't ever think that just because your church is scripturally sound now that you think, well, this couldn't happen here. No, Paul is saying that this is a widespread problem and you have to be ever vigilant to stay on the path to stay true to the scripture. And in verse 10, we see why. For am I now seeking the favor of men or of God, or am I striving to please men? If I were still trying to please men, I would not be a bondservant of Christ. So this is where Paul really puts the cherry on top of the Sunday. He's saying, I'm in chains. Do you really think that I care what people think? Do you really think that I am concerned 
about being accepting and tolerant of everybody and what other people want to hear. Because if that were the case, I'm pretty sure I would not be persecuted right now because of Christ. Now, this was not a prison epistle, so Paul wasn't in prison when he was writing this, but Paul was a person that had already felt the wrath of local officials and religious leaders in Jerusalem. Paul has already faced a fair deal of, of religious persecution at this point. And he's essentially saying, and he'll say this uh, more specifically in other parts of his writings, what is the purpose of going through all this, facing this persecution, being shipwrecked and being imprisoned and being beaten and stoned to death and run out of various towns? What's the point if it wasn't to bring people the truth of the gospel? Paul got it. He was saying Yes, it's going to make people uncomfortable. Yes, it's going to make some people angry. But if you have to choose between teaching the truth and pleasing people, in other words, pleasing God or pleasing men, you go with pleasing God. It's not always going to be pretty. Sometimes it's going to hurt. But it's what we're supposed to do as Christians. It's what Christ himself did, and we're supposed to model our lives after him. And so Paul understands here, he's saying, if I'm not here to please men, and you're not here to please men. So when you're making decisions on stuff like this, that should not be your primary concern. Churches ought to be a place where people can come in and feel welcomed and safe. But if you think that that's a place that nobody should ever feel uncomfortable or nobody should ever be challenged, or that the truth can just be kind of put to the side so that we can say some things that make people feel better about themselves, you've got the gospel all wrong. Stay the course, friends. Just in case you were wondering, yes, I am a straight white Christian male and a small government constitutionalist, which means I have no chance of getting any help from the government and wouldn't accept their help even if they offered. Which means I'm going to need you to like and subscribe because my gun collection is not going to pay for itself.